Hello everyone, welcome to the Archipelago Edits live stream. My name is Liam, one of the developers here at Archipelago where we create Lightroom presets and creative profiles for photographers. Very, very excited for this stream. This is the first in a new series of live streams called Archipelago Edits where we'll be focusing on a different photographic technique for each of the episodes in the series, editing images from the community, sharing tips and tricks on how best to achieve that particular look, and of course, which presets uh, and tools are best to achieve that look as well. Uh, so welcome to the stream. Do jump in the chat and say hi. I can see we've got Adorito here from Scotland. Welcome Adorito. It's nice to know where you're from as well. Do let us know where you're from. I love seeing where people are tuned in from. Got Stark from Romania. Lisa's on from sunny London. It's been very, very sunny up here in uh, Sheffield today. Lauren, thanks for joining. Kentucky, very nice. Oh, we've got loads of people on here, look. Ludmill from Bulgaria, welcome Ludmill. Thank you for joining. Mexico, Western Pennsylvania, incredible, so cool. So hot, says Lise. Yeah, we're still 27 degrees and it's uh, 7 p.m. in the evening here, so it's been a hot day. Obviously not going to be as hot as Phoenix, Arizona, I don't think. Monica, let me know how hot it's been there today. Gabrielle from Canada, thank you for joining. So yeah, like I said, new series of uh, live streams. This is the first episode of this. We're gonna be looking at a different photographic technique for each of the episodes. This one's gonna be about dark and moody. So I'll be editing five images in this stream from the community. We actually had over 150 submissions for this live stream, which is incredible. So thank you to everyone for submitting some incredible, incredible work in there. Um, so it's very difficult to select the five, but I've got five images from five different photographers uh, and each of those photographers will get a free Archipelago preset collection of their choice. So if you did submit, keep your eye out because if you see your image in the stream, uh, you will be getting a free Archipelago preset collection of your choice. Daniel's here from Germany. Welcome Daniel, thank you for joining. So we'll get underway in just a moment. As I go through the stream and we edit each of the images, you're gonna see the photographer's name up in the top left along with the EXIF data. Um, and like I said, we'll be going through, we'll be editing in a dark and moody style. I'll be sharing some tips and tricks on how best to achieve this, uh, which presets and uh, tools and things like that can help achieve it as well. But if you have any questions as we go through this, do let me know in the chat. Happy to try and answer those as we go through the stream. All right, so let's kick things off. So we've got an incredible image to start with. This one's from Miles Lamb of at Lamb Photography on Instagram. Absolutely love this photo. So, so cool. Incredible venue. We've got this, uh, this huge room here, really high ceilings, massive window letting loads of light in. Uh, we've got this sort of strong light hitting the back wall. Uh, this massive chandelier. I love the stained glass at the top here. That's just creating this dapple effect uh, on the left of the frame. And then of course the main subjects down here with nice motion, this lovely soft light. Uh, and then yeah, the wood paneling, the wood floor, everything just looks incredible in this photo. Such a beautiful, beautiful photo, Miles. Well done. So in terms of uh, editing, we'll dive in in a moment on this image, but to begin with, let's just talk a little bit about dark and moody as a style. So it's partly to do with the way that you edit, but it's also partly to do with the way you shoot. And the reason that this image is gonna work really well for a dark and moody edit is because we have a very, very soft light where our subject is. So down here, you can see you've got really, really nice soft light, uh, nice soft shadows. And although we do have some direct light in the scene on the wall over here, it's in the background. Uh, it just adds a little bit of interest. It's not hitting the subject. So this is really, really helpful in achieving a dark and moody look. If you have really strong direct light and very, very harsh shadows, that's not gonna help you to achieve a dark and moody image. So this one's gonna work really well because we have those soft, uh, that soft light in hitting the subject. We have the hard light in the background, which is just creating a little bit of interest uh, but it's not creating those really harsh uh, highlights and really dark shadows. We have a nice balance. All right, so let's go ahead and edit this. I'm gonna start off by setting the exposure. So there's a slight increase of exposure and the white balance. I think I'm gonna warm up a tiny touch. 
somewhere around there is looking good to me and let's straighten the image i'm just going to use this chandelier as a bit of a guide maybe somewhere around there i think it looks straight to me all right lena's on hi lena thanks for joining jenna from nebraska thank you for joining jenna All right, so let's go ahead and edit this. I'm going to use Wayfarer for this image. So the Wayfarer collection, let's have a little look at the presets. I'm definitely going color, not black and white. So let's have a look. So there's a couple I'm quite drawn to. Wayfarer 3 is looking good. We get those kind of uh, rosewood tones, that kind of uh, rich, ready warmth. But I think I'm going to go for Wayfarer 4. I'm loving those orange tones that we're getting. It really suits the sort of wood paneling, wood floors that kind of muted lighting. Uh, so I love this nice warm look. And let me tell you, some people uh, mistakenly think that uh, you can't edit darker moody images warm. Darker moody has to be sort of like on the cooler side. And while cool darker moody, moody images look really, really good, you definitely can edit warm darker moody images. So let me tell you that for now. So definitely going warm on this because I think it suits the wood paneling and the kind of the toning that we're getting in the image. Lauren says, mm, gotta love Wayfarer. Oh yeah. That brief look at black and white was excellent as well. Yes. Sean Zong, yo Archipelago fam. Welcome, Sean. Lee says, late to the party. You're not too late, Lee. You're all good. You are here, that's what counts. All right, so let's take a look. So we've applied the presets. This is Wayfarer 4. Got those lovely warm tones going on. Uh, now, with Wayfarer, you get the defined profile up at the top right here, and that's currently set to zero. Now, what define does is it adds definition to the image. So it adds clarity and contrast just to pull out details in the image. And that's not what I want for this because I want to have that softness to it. I don't want to pull out too much detail and add too much contrast to it. So I'm really happy with where it's at, at the moment with the profile set to zero. So let's go ahead and mix and match a profile from a different set with the preset. So I'm going to go into the profile browser at the top right here. And let's take a look at, I think I'll go Halcyon. So Halcyon has the Eclipse profile, uh, which is the color profile in the set. And it's really, really nice. It adds a nice amount of punch to the image, a nice rich warmth. So it definitely complements what we've already got going on. But what you'll also notice at the bottom of the frame is it adds that graduated filter. So it just darkens the bottom of the frame, which is really gonna suit this. So it's gonna draw your eye to where the subject is. Uh, we still get that kind of, um, detail in the fireplace and obviously the window is still nice and bright but it's just going to add a little bit of direction to where the light is so i'm going to go ahead and apply that uh, so that's set to 100 as default i'm going to increase the profile probably let's this is without this is with it all the way up i'm probably going to go all the way up why not it's all about dark and moody right so let's play around with the exposure so i'm going to go maybe about there i'm just keeping an eye on the light on the subjects down here. So I don't want to lift it too much because as this was shot, there was some nice shadow down the sides of the subjects and some light hitting the front of them. And that looks really, really nice. That suits this really well, works with that dark and moody look. So I don't want to brighten it too much and kind of bring them out too much. I don't want to have it too dark so you can't see them. So let me go maybe somewhere around there. All right, let's take a look what's going on in the image. So highlights over here are maybe a little bit too bright and probably a little bit too bright just behind the subjects there. So let's have a play around with the highlights and the shadows in the uh, tone settings. So highlights, I'm just gonna bring them down a little bit. I don't wanna go too crazy because otherwise you look, uh, you kind of lose the, the depth of the image. Uh, let's have a look at shadows. So one thing you can sometimes do is just increase your shadows and then bring the overall exposure down a little bit so let's play with whites yeah that's looking good to me so i'm really really happy with that we've got a nice warm edit we've got the eclipse profile on there that's on top of wayfarer 4. so got that lovely rich warmth we've got this nice dark shadow running up here we still have some light hitting the door on this side and obviously this really nice light here and the dapple light at the top that's coming from the uh from the stained glass subjects are nicely exposed uh, we have a little bit of a silhouette going on, but nothing too uh, too over the top. So here's the before and here's after. So quite a nice transformation there. And I'll show you the side by side. 
So again, that lovely rich warmth, I think that suits this really well. We have this kind of uh, golden hour vibe with the light looking like it's quite low and coming in from the side and all of that wood. So it definitely suits that warm tone in. Aubrey says, Wayfarer is my go-to for years. Awesome, happy to hear that, Aubrey. Uh, Lenka, hello from California. Welcome, Lenka, thank you for joining. Emma, well, hello from Australia, where it's 4 a.m. and my baby and toddler are awake. Oh, my word. Well, one benefit to that is that you get to join this stream, though, right, Emma? If you do manage to get back to sleep, don't worry, you can watch this after it's aired. So go to sleep if you need to. Uh, Chris is on as well. Hello, Chris. Awesome. So incredible first image there from Miles. Again, Miles, you'll be getting a free pre preset collection of your choice. Um, we'll drop an email into the chat later on to let you know where you can uh, get in touch with us about that. But that's the first image down. That one's with Wayfarer and the Eclipse profile there. Okay, so next image, we have this one from Bryn. Again, a really great example in terms of the lighting. So this looks like it's an overcast uh, image. So it's either overcast or it's in some open shade, but I think it's overcast judging by the light behind them as well. So we have the two subjects here. Uh, stood in front of what I presume is a greenhouse with some foliage in there. Uh, and one of the things that works really well for this in terms of that dark and moody look is we have very little color, very little sort of um, saturation and vibrance going on. So we've got a little bit of blue in the denim down here, some green in the cardigan and in the foliage and a little bit of yellow as well in the foliage behind. But otherwise it's a really uh, neutral kind of color palette and that can definitely help with a darker moody edit as well. So if you've got a really strong color, whether it's very strong saturation or it's very bright, you will probably find it difficult to get a darker moody edit. You'll need to really heavily desaturate those colors so they don't draw the eye too much. Um, but if you start with a really nice color palette like this, um, you're gonna find that that dark and moody edit is much, much easier to achieve. All right, let's take a look at this, uh, this image here. So I'm gonna use one of the quest sets for this. So I think I'm gonna use quest three. So this is uh, quest three dynamic, and these look awesome. Let's go ahead and increase the exposure actually first. Somewhere around there, and I think it needs a tiny touch more warmth, but nothing too major. Just gonna straighten it as well. I think auto will probably do it. Yep, there we go. Let's take a look at the preset. So AQ031, AQ032, and AQ033. So they're all looking nice, and I do quite like the cool look, but I think AQ031 with that sort of neutral starting point is um, where I wanna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the preset. And this has the Dynamics profile. I love this profile, very, very cool. So if I go ahead and zoom in on the subject's face here, Dynamics is set to 100 as default. And if I decrease this, you can see it just flattens out the image. It changes sort of the structure of the shadows and highlights of the image. So you kind of get that very, very flat look when you decrease the Dynamics profile. And when you increase it, you can see how it shifts the sort of shape of the light in the image. So for this, I want to make sure that there's some nice shape in the subject's face here. So I'm going to go for a little bit of an increase in dynamics. Somewhere around there, set that to 134. And then let's go ahead and play around with the, with the highlights and the shadow. So one thing I'm noticing with this image is there is some strong light hitting this part of the subject here, which is just drawing the eye away from the faces of the subject. So what I'm going to do to start with uh, let's do a couple of different things. I'm going to use a tool from uh, Archipelago Quest 18, which is the Arbor set. That's this month's Quest release, which is the Subject Pop tool. And what Subject Pop does is it uses Lightroom's AI subject recognition to select the subject and uh, darken the background selectively. So this is a really great tool for dark and moody edits because it's going to allow you to produce that dark moody background without underexposing your subjects. So Subject Pop, there you go. Look at that one click and we just darken down the background. So I'm gonna select that and use the amount slider at the top left to set where I want it. So I don't want it too high because it's a relatively dark background anyway, um, but maybe maybe the default set to 100, I think just darkens it down just enough so that your eye is definitely focused on the subjects. Uh, then I'm gonna play around with the actual whites and shadows and highlights. So I think I'm gonna start with whites. I'm gonna bring those down a little bit. And I'm mainly looking at their faces for now because I'm going to deal with this bit separately in a moment. So I think, yeah, 
somewhere around there that's looking good to me. Shadows, yeah, a tiny little increase just to make sure we're not losing too much detail in the hair. All right, so let's dive into the mask panel here. So you can see we've got our subject pop mask and that's obviously doing that in the background there. But what I'm gonna do is select the, let's go ahead, actually we'll apply a radial gradient. So I'm gonna use this to deal with this sort of hot spot of light on the right here. So I'm gonna use a radial gradient. I'll set that over that area. Let's go a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's kind of covering what I want it to cover. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the three dots on that mask layer and I can choose intersect mask with and then select subject. And what that will do is it will apply a radial gradient but only in that area of the subject. So if I choose that, you can see now it won't select this part of the background, it's just the subject. And now I can have a play around with my exposure. I'll bring that down and then the highlights. So I don't wanna, don't wanna go too crazy. I'm just kind of balancing out the uh, the level of the skin tone here versus on the subject's face, just so that your eye isn't drawn to this part of the image. So yeah, I think somewhere around there looks really good. So this is without that. You can see that you've got that kind of hot spot of highlights um, where the subject's hands are. Um, but when we apply that, we kind of balance it out with the rest of the image and then your eye is back to being drawn to the subject's face. We could go ahead and do another one and select the subject. In fact, what I'm gonna do, so I'm, I'm quite happy with the illumination of the subject on the left, but I think some of the shadows are maybe a little too deep on the subject on the right, and that's just because they've got their face uh, directed down, so less lights hitting their face. So what I'm gonna do is, again, I'm gonna use a brush this time probably. I'm gonna roughly brush around the subject's face there shouldn't need to do this, but I'm just gonna inter intersect it with select subject just to make sure it's not doing anything else. And then let's go ahead and play around with the shadows. I'm just gonna lift that a little bit. I'm gonna take the highlights down a tiny touch, and then I can bring the exposure up just a little. Maybe around about there. So it's worth kind of switching it off and on just to kind of see the amount of the effect. You don't wanna to go too over the top with this but I think that looks quite natural. So let's go ahead and apply that. Just gonna play around with the overall exposure. I think somewhere around there it's looking good and I'm quite happy with that light balance. Maybe a tiny touch warmer. Yeah, that's looking good to me. So this is before and this is after. That's with AQ31. We've got the Dynamics profile, which we've increased a little bit there. I've gone ahead and fixed some issues there where the highlights were sort of drawing your eye away from the subject's face. Uh, and just lifted the shadows in one of the subjects face there as well. And we've used subject pop to darken the background down and keep the, uh, the subjects nice and clear in the frame there. So here's the side by side. Not a massive difference. It's a really um, natural kind of look with uh, Quest 3. I, I love this, this preset collection. It's very, very natural, but it adds a level of mood to it. So you can see how it just shifts some of those colors, um, especially in the jeans there. You can see it just desaturates the blue a little bit. And we've still got the greens there. They're nice and uh, they're actually very, very natural. They're looking almost exactly the same as they do in the original image. But you'll notice that the green that's between the subjects here that again was a little bit distracting, that's been desaturated there as well. And then of course, we've got that nice mood that we brought in using the subject pop and the other masking tools. So loving that. Again, before and after. So incredible image from Bryn. Again, thank you for submitting that Bryn you will be getting a preset collection of your choice as well. Let's catch up on the chat. Josephine says, hi from Sweden. Oh, incredible country, I love Sweden. Welcome to the stream. I'm sneaking as I told the toddler he can't watch Paw Patrol. <laughs> Amazing, good effort, Emma. Uh, Primrose is on, hello, loving these. This is my jam, glad to hear it. Thank you very much. Letha says, one of my favorite quest sets. Yeah, it's an incredible set. Hello from Hawaii, says Shauna. Wow, I'm jealous. 
Hawaii looks beautiful. I've never visited, but I'd love to. Uh, Aubrey says, I love Subject Pop. Just used it on my last wedding edits and my mind was blown. Such a great tool. Yeah, it's been getting a lot of love. So it's uh, it's an incredible tool. And like I said before, that's part of the uh, Quest 18 Arbor set. That's our current uh, Quest preset this month. So if you haven't snagged that, um, if you sign up to become a Quest member for $8, you can download that set for free right now as part of your subscription. So check that out. Okay, so next image, we have this gorgeous newborn shot here. Uh, Top-down view, which I really, really like. Uh, I love the, the wood flooring and that they've sort of angled the, uh, the kind of wood um, at a sort of a diagonal ag angle, so that makes it a little bit more interesting. Again, like we mentioned before, that kind of uh, very neutral color palette. We've got the warm brownish tones of the wood in the background creamy tones in the fabric. I love this kind of shape here of the fabric drape down here and all the texture as well. Very, very nice photo. This one's by Sanya Monica. Gorgeous image. So let's start by playing around with our exposure levels. It's looking pretty good actually as it was. I'm, and I'm happy with the uh, white balance. Don't think I'll be changing that. Uh, and let's have a think about what we're gonna edit this one with. I think we'll go for Asteria. Asteria is one of the moodiest sets out there. It's incredible. It's basically one click mood. It's very, very uh, impressive. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. Asteria 1. Got three variants of that. Asteria 2, which is a warm tone. I'm not going to go too warm on this, I think. And Asteria 3, I think. I'm liking the neutral look of Asteria 1. I'm going to go for Asteria 1.1. One, one. We've got the tonality profile. This lets you shift the tones either cooler or warmer. But I think, again, I'm gonna leave it in the middle because I like the neutral toning that we're getting for this. All right, let's play with the overall exposure. So whenever I'm setting the exposure, one of the things I tend to look at is the actual subject's uh, face or whatever the focal point of the image is. Um, I'll set that and then if I need to uh, correct different parts of the image, I'll kind of deal with those later. But I think it's really important to start by getting the subject nicely exposed. So that's looking good to me. I'm quite happy with that. Let's take a look at uh, the masking panel. So when you apply a preset in the Asteria collection, it actually applies a mask as well, which is a vignette mask. Um, so we've got two here. We've got the Exposure Plus, which just corrects the exposure to offset the vignette. And then we have the actual vignette here. So if we select this, you can see the uh, radial filter that's applied. And then we can go ahead and place this wherever we want. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to bring this side in because we had quite dark shadows on the left already. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. And I'm just going to place the center of this just around about here. So the light is just illuminating the subject's face. And we can see the light is naturally coming from sort of bottom right of the frame here. So I'm just trying to make sure that that looks natural rather than sort of this side over here. So somewhere around there looks good to me. Might slightly change the angle of it so it illuminates this part. Yeah, that looks good. Wonderful. We could go ahead and play around with the actual mask, but I'm really happy with that. I think the only thing that I might do is adjust the shadows on this side, which are just very, very heavy. So what we could do with that is use a linear gradient and we could go ahead. I'm going to hold down shift, which will just make sure that that's straight. I'm going to do quite a large, quite a large fade there just to make sure it looks really natural. I'm going to set that somewhere around there and let's just bring up the, bring up the blacks a tiny little bit. bring up the exposure just a little bit. So I don't want to lift it too high because we naturally had quite a lot of shadow there. But I'm just trying to match what we've got on the right hand side here. So I think somewhere around there is looking good to me. So that's a little bit more balanced. Uh, a couple of other things that I want to do. There is uh, a little bit too much um, highlight in here and I think that's just the white. So I'm going to bring the whites down just a little tiny bit and just offset that with the exposure and then I'm just finding that the hair is getting a little bit too dark as well so I'm going to go ahead and let's do another we'll do a brush I'm just going to brush this over the, the hair I'll 
turn off auto mask actually just to make sure it gets all of that and I'm going to intersect that with subject again just so that I'm only selecting the subject and let's bring the shadows up I don't want to go too crazy maybe shadows up a tiny bit and then maybe blacks up a little bit as well there we go just to make sure we still got some texture there in the hair so that's looking lovely to me here's before and here's after so a nice amount of illumination on the face of the subject. We actually could get away with darkening it down just a tiny little bit more, but I'm really happy with that. We've got that nice sort of darkening around the edges. So your eyes really drawn into the uh, center of the frame there. Uh, and then obviously we've used a masking tool. So if I turn the masks off, this is without, and this is with. So just really draws your eye to the center of the frame, retains that nice soft light, but just illuminates the subject in the middle there. So here's the side by side. Lauren says, mm, yes, one click mood for sure. Yeah, it really is with the stereo. It's very, very impressive. Lee says, I adore seeing a moody style with newborn photography. It works so well. I agree with that. And this is a very gorgeous image here from Sanyi. So they, there's the before and there's after. So that's image number three. All right, let's move on. So image number four, this one's by Pearl Stevens. Love this photo, really nice um, placement of the subject. We've got this lovely um, flower kind of bush on the left-hand side. Uh, and again, lovely soft light. It's looking like it's very overcast. So again, that's creating those nice uh, softer shadows and softer highlights. So again, that's really, really gonna help this image. Now I think for this, I'm probably gonna go for a black and white edit. So let's take a look at, let's go for X film. We could go color, color is quite nice. Well, I think I wanna go black and white. Yeah. Let's go for X film eight and we'll go for a moody black and white edit. So let's start by playing around with the character profile. So character will mute the highlights and the shadows. So I'm just gonna bring that back a little bit. I don't want the shadows to be too muted, maybe somewhere around there. And uh, let's have a little look. We can go ahead and use subject pop again. So quest 18, subject pop. Yep, that's looking really good. So that's just gonna darken down that background and maintain the subject. Uh, so I'm just gonna balance that out. I'm not gonna go too crazy, maybe about 70. That's looking good. Um, finding the highlights to be just a little bit too punchy on this. Um, so what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna head into the color grading panel. I'll show you something in the color grading panel. So you, obviously you've got your mid-tone shadows and your highlights in here, but you've also got the global uh, adjustments which are here. And the part that we're gonna look at is the luminance slider. So with this particular preset in, uh, in the X-Film collection, uh, luminance is set to zero, so it's at the default position. But what I'll show you is if you increase this and then decrease it, you can see how it affects the luminance of the image. So without shifting any of the colors in the color wheel, I'm just gonna play around with luminance and I'm probably gonna drag it all the way to the left. So I'm gonna bring the luminance right down. That'll kind of mute down the, uh, the toning in the image. And then I'll bring the exposure back up to offset that. So now we haven't got quite as deep shadows and those highlights are a little bit more controlled, a little bit more muted looking. Because of that, I think I might increase subject pop. So I'm gonna go back in here, bring subject pop up a little bit more. And then the other thing that I wanna do with this image, so obviously we've got all this foliage behind and the flowers to the left. And then we kind of have this gap on the right which looks fine, but I think because of the foliage being a little bit more illuminated here, and then obviously the lighter tone in, in the background, your eye is drawn that way a little bit too much. So I wanna try and control that so that your eye is focused on this part of the frame. So I'm gonna do that with masking again. Let's go ahead and use a linear gradient. Again, hold down shift, just to make sure that's nice and straight. And uh, we'll go for a fairly large graduation, I think around about there. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring the exposure down. So what I'm basically looking at is 
this foliage here, I kind of want to match it to the background so that this all feels very similar in tonality uh, rather than the right hand side of the frame being quite a lot brighter. So I'm going to set this so it looks about right. So I'm not too worried about the uh, the sky at the moment. I'm just going to set the level of foliage. So I think somewhere around there. And then what we can do is increase the whites, which will correct the sky. So obviously, as it stood, they were very, very muted, which looks a little bit unnatural. But if I bring this up, we can see that that starts to become a little bit more natural where you have that separation between the, uh, the shadows and the highlights. So let's go somewhere around there. So I'll show you that's before, that's without the correction, and that's after. So you can see how it just darkens down this side of the frame, kind of balances what we've got on this side in the background, but we've not got really, really dark um, sky that can look sometimes a little bit too uh, fake. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Maybe back it off a tiny little bit. Somewhere around there, it's looking good. Okay, I'm very happy with this. Let's see, what else do I wanna do? I think, one other thing that we're going to do, obviously we've got a black and white image here, so it gives us a little bit more wiggle room um, to play around. And I think one of the things I might do is just bring the grass down here. So in the black and white panel, uh, I'm going to assume that this is yellow because grass tends to render in the yellow more than the green. But let's have a look. Yes, yeah, so if I hover over that, you can see that's highlighting the yellow slider. So I can go ahead and bring the black and white mix for yellow down. And that's just going to darken down the grass and again, draw your eye to that subject in the middle of the frame. So again, not too far, maybe around about there. So it's kind of a similar level of, uh, of gray as the board around here. And that's looking really good to me. So let me show you the before. Obviously this is a color before, and this is after with X-Film 8, we have the profile backed off just a little bit. And then of course, we've done some masking here with subject pop. Um, and if I show you the before, this is without subject pop and the graduated filter, and this is after. And if I show you the side by side. Looking super good. All right, so we have lost the music. I don't know why, let me see if I can fix that. Give me a second. can't have this without music here we go there we go that's what we want all right so let's catch up on the chat later says oh i love this thank you very much aubrey gorgeous edit on that sean says what a transformation elizabeth says asteria is my favorite yes it's one of my favorites as well Crying out for a four by five crop on this one, although that defeats the object of the video, I guess. We could do four by five on this. It probably would cut off that part of the image though that I've just uh, tweaked. So yeah, it might defeat the, the purpose. All right, so amazing image there from Pearl. Image number four. Let's head on to the last image which is my personal favorite out of the five that we've got. This one is absolutely gorgeous. This one's by Aubrey McCready, at Tahoe Photographer on Instagram. And what a stunning photo we have here. So we have this couple and looking over an incredibly epic scene. We've got the mountain layers in the background, this forest down here, the couple stood on this uh, sort of rocky outcrop and then just the way that the veil's placed, it is perfection i absolutely adore this yes aubrey there you are congratulations this is a gorgeous photo <laughs> lee says that's raw geez i retire yes this is raw straight out of camera tell me about it what a gorgeous photo so i'm gonna go ahead and use let's go for we'll go for another another warmer edit i think on this one we'll go for awe Let's have a look at some of the ore presets on here. Oh yeah, they're looking good. I'm not going black and white. I'm definitely going color. And I think, I think I'm going to go for ore three because I love the way it's rendering the uh, the trees. 
down below the subjects there. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the preset. Let's take a look at, I'm probably going to back the temperature off just a tiny little bit because I want to have a little bit of cool tone in in the background. So I'm just going to back that off a little bit. I'm happy with the tint. Let's have a look at the profile. This is the gold profile. And I definitely want to boost that a little bit somewhere around there. 146, I've got that set too. It's looking very good. Uh, let's use my favorite subject pop tool. It's got to be done, right? Subject pop, let's take a look. Oh yeah, look at that. Absolutely amazing. Just brings out all of that detail in the background. So I'm going to add that. Let's increase the subject pop tool. That's looking very good. I might actually duplicate that. So I'm going to go in and duplicate that layer and bring that one down quite a bit. So it just lets me push it a little bit further than what you can with uh, the single preset. I've just duplicated it. So I'm going to set that there. And now I need to balance out the uh, the subject in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new mask selecting the subject. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to bring the exposure down just a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast. And I'm going to add a little bit of temperature, so a little bit more warmth. So what I'm going for is a slightly cooler toned edit in the uh, the background but maintaining the warmth on the subjects. So obviously we've got the light coming in from uh, the right of the frame, hitting the back of this subject here and the side of the subject there. Uh, so I just wanna maintain that kind of warmth that the sun would be giving, but I'm gonna bring the temperature of the rest of the image down a little bit, somewhere around there, I think that's good. So I'm just balancing those two out. So this is without the masks and this is with. So huge transformation. It really impresses me how uh, accurate Lightroom's AI subject recognition is. It does such a good job. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with that. So far, let's have a look. What else do we want to do? If we look at the before image and then after, that's looking really nice. Now, one of the things that I will show you actually is a little bit of a, a little bit of a tip. So obviously we've got an image here where we have um, an individual in a blue suit. And one of the questions that we get asked quite a lot is um, what presets keep the suits blue, things like that. So there are certain sets that will sort of maintain very color ac accurate kind of um, looks. Uh, some of them will shift colors, some will keep certain colors the same and shift other colors. Obviously it's all part of the stylistic look of the set. And with this preset, which is one of the all presets uh, with the gold profile, that's gonna shift more towards those warm tones. So part of that, it's going to change some of the colors such as blue. So let me show you how you would fix that on this particular image. So I'm going to go back into the masking panel. I'm going to create a new mask. And in this case, what I want to select is a color range. So I want to select the blue of the suit. So I'm going to go to color range and can now use the dropper and you can either just click to select one color or you can actually click and drag to select a series of colors. And then we can use the refine slider here to refine where that is and I'm not too bothered about what what is selecting in the background here I'm just making sure it's not selecting any of the other subject so I would say somewhere around there I can then go ahead and intersect intersect that with select subjects and now it's going to ignore all of the background and then I could also Let's leave it at that for now. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to use the temperature slider to correct this. So because now I've selected the blue of the suit, obviously this is shifting a lot of the colors so they're warmer, a little bit more desaturated. I'm going to use the temperature slider to bring this back to look in blue. So as I drag this to the left, you can see that we start to introduce blue back to the suit and that's just simply by shifting the, uh, the temperature. There is other ways that you can do this as well, but I find that this is the easiest way when we're talking about a blue suit and wanting to correct that. Uh, just using the uh, temperature slider can work really well for that. So if I go ahead, let's zoom in on the subject. So if I turn that mask off, that's just with the preset and that's with it on uh, with the temperature slider across. Obviously we can go a little bit further, but what you want to do is obviously not look too unnatural. If you've got a preset, 
that's going to desaturate the blues, let's say in the skies and things like that. Um, you want to follow that if that's the type of look that you want to go for. If you like this preset, that's part and parcel of the preset. But if you want to make sure that the suit is still blue, it's just important that it's not, it still ties in with the rest of the image. So it doesn't look super, super blue. It still ties in with that slightly warmer tone in. So I'm not going to go crazy like this because that's going to look maybe a little bit unnatural. Um, I'm going to go somewhere between the two. So it still has that blue tone in, but it's, it's a, a little bit more uh, saturated in blue than it would have been without. So this is without and that's with that correction. And you can see it's not really affecting the other subject in this, it's just affecting the blue because of the color range. So before and after. So I go ahead, zoom back out. And again, if I turn the masks off, so this just shows you how much you can do in the masking panel in this updated version of Lightroom. This is with just the preset. And this is with those masks. So we've got subject pop working hard to bring that background down and maintain the light and the subject. Uh, and then we've used a mask to uh, balance out the subject and add a little bit of warmth whilst we've got a cooler background. And then another mask we've used to adjust the color of the suit so it's back to having a blue tone rather than being totally desaturated. And I've done that in the mask rather than in the HSL panel, just so it doesn't affect the rest of the image because I want to maintain the color tones we've got here. If I went in and boosted the blue in there, we're gonna see loads of blue coming in the mountains, in the background, in the sky, and that's not the look that I want. I like this kind of balance, but now I've still got a very natural looking suit down at the bottom. So here is the before. This is the unedited, very, very gorgeous raw file that Aubrey took. And then this is the edit using or three, we've increased the gold profile, use subject mask from Quest 18, uh, the subject pop mask, and then we've also done a couple of uh, localized adjustments using the mask tools there as well. And let me show you the side by side. So go ahead, zoom in on the subjects there. Super, super nice. So let me catch up on the chat, what we got going on here. Elizabeth says, yeah, all is great with this. Yes. Lady says, does it work as well on Lightroom compared to Lightroom Classic? So the, the tool sets in Lightroom, most of them will function exactly the same as Lightroom Classic, but Lightroom Classic has an edge and there are tools that are only available in Classic. So if you can, I would recommend using Classic. If you're using you know, a mobile device, something like an iPad, then obviously you've got no choice. But if you're working on desktop, I would recommend using Classic because you'll find that there's features in there that just aren't in the regular version of Lightroom. So definitely, definitely check out Classic if you can. Dala says this image is amazing, love this edit. Gabrielle says, really love the edit on that last photo. Thank you, Gabrielle. I'm glad you liked what I did with the Aubrey. Had to make sure to do it justice because it is an incredible photo. Autumn says, this video has been so fun to watch and full of great tips. Ah, oh, that's good to hear. Thank you so much, Autumn. Bristol says, what preset was that? So that last one was Awe from the Awe collection. So it's preset three from the Awe collection. Awesome, so there is the five images in a row with a dark and moody edit. We've got one black and white there. We have four color images, all using different presets. We've got Wayfarer, Asteria, Quest 3 Dynamic, Awe, and X-Film, all of which can produce that nice dark and moody edit. Obviously, she had a few tips as we've gone through this to kind of give you an idea of how best to both shoot it and also how to edit in that style as well. Big congratulations to the five photographers whose images we featured in this. Uh, you will all be getting a free preset collection of your choice. Um, we will stick an email address in the chat shortly for you to get in touch with us uh, and, and we will sort out a free pre preset collection for you. And don't worry if your image wasn't uh, shown in this and you've already submitted some photos through um, via the link that's in the description. Uh, you may see it come up in a future episode. So because we haven't used it in this one doesn't necessarily mean it's 
it's out. We may choose to use it in a future one. And of course you can go ahead and submit more if you'd like to via that link. Uh, we'll be doing one of these every single month. Like I said, we're gonna follow a different photographic style each month. If you have suggestions for a particular photographic style that you wanna see in a future version of this live stream, do let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear those. Uh, we've got another live stream coming up in a couple of weeks time. That's going to be a sneak peek look at Quest 19, which is next month's release. Uh, I was editing with those presets earlier today and they are absolutely amazing. So very exciting for those to come out at the start of next month, but we'll be doing a sneak peek uh, live stream in a couple of weeks time for that. So definitely make sure you're subscribed to our channel, put notifications on all that kind of stuff. So you know when we go live, uh, we also have lots of tutorial videos coming out uh, next week. There's gonna be an incredible uh, tutorial video that Chris has made about off-camera flash. So lots of great stuff on there. So definitely uh, go and check out some of the other videos on the channel here. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. And um, that really helps us out. Uh, and let us know what you want to see. We, we try and kind of cater these to what you want to see. So let us know uh, what you'd like to see in the future and we'll try and get those done as well. So that's it from me, unless we have any other last minute questions. Again, thank you so much to everyone for joining. It's been an incredible stream as it always is. Uh, absolutely amazing images submitted. Keep submitting your images via the link. We're throwing that in the chat. It's also in the description of the video as well. So submit your RAWs, make sure they are raw. Um, we did get a few JPEGs sent through and we, we can't edit with those because they don't work so well with the presets. They're designed for raw images. So make sure they're in a raw format. Uh, put your name in the file name. You can include your Instagram handle in there as well if you'd like to. Submit those through and we'll be choosing those to use in the future streams. And if your image gets featured, uh, you will be getting a free preset collection as well. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for joining and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.